Welcome back, people. You're still on to Wake Up Nigeria. And of course, it's time for our book chat review. And today's book is Lagos is Killing Me. And it's by Oloye D. Michael Taiwo. And like all through true ports of conscience, he took his time to write about the fate of his country and the malaise of corruption that besieges it. Welcome mm -hmm. to the show. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm All good. right. I'm great. I'm great. Very well. Thank you. So this anthology that you have put together here, it actually covers an expanse of human experience from love to life and death. Yeah. What inspired this? <laughs> All right. So mm, words actually come to me. Mm -hmm. And then um, every experience, everybody I meet is actually uh, a canvas for me. So I try to elicit whatever message the universe has um, encamped around you. I try to distill them into writing and then give my own perspective. All right. Quickly, I also need to add that your choice of words are very rich, I must add. Thank you They're very, very much. rich. They're very um, deep as Thank well you. quickly Thank let's you know go through some of those you know some of your poems here right. and the one that really caught my attention was the moribund restaurant hmm. tell me about that <laughs> okay it's just it, 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 it's a story about nigeria okay and the fact that yesterday's promises are still on today's menu list and things have not actually shifted from where they used to be hmm. everything has just been like a repetition of the past so when are we going to move past what you're saving us yesterday? We've had enough of your repetitions. We've had a whole lot of your stories. We're now tired. Can we move forward? Can mm. you tell us new things? Can we have new dreams? Can we have new names? So that's what more. Okay, so I'm quickly about. going to touch on the last um, part, the last um, sentence right. here. And it reads, these muscles of tongue in, in chic campaigns, extolling nepotism, Marginalization, apathy, inciting tribal delicacies may yet be our last supper. I love it. Like, like those, put, those words coming together, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it really, but um, I actually really like this poem. Let's also talk about um, news and die. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm just going to read this to you. Please, I'd like you to listen. His slippery words swept her, like, swept her feet like banana peels. She fell and slipped into a nine-month conundrum. Her name sprung up everywhere like a repulsive dictum. What inspired this particular <laughs> Okay, so I, I think um, in, in my head, okay, I think I watched a documentary about Nigerian ladies that were trying to go to Libya mm. and whatever they could have experienced. And I was wondering what could have actually prompted them to want to run away. Mm. And then I discovered that some of them probably had, you know, domestic issues at home and they can't just cope with their life and they want to run. And then in certain environments, because of the squalor and, you know, poverty there, people do anything to survive. So a young girl can just, you know, be affianced to a guy that has no promises of tomorrow for her. But for the mere fact that she needs to survive, the guy probably have his... With, with her, her. And before you know it, she's pregnant mm. and she's a good girl but because she's, of society we've yeah, actually found ourselves everybody now yeah she's just unfortunate and everybody uses it uh, as you know as a metaphor for anything bad so it's actually very terrible. now let's talk about has any of your poems here been been inspired by any real life events definitely yeah, definitely um Lagos is killing me is real life events. Okay. You know, it's in real time. It's what you see every, every day, day under yeah, the bridge, yeah, on the road, while yeah. you're walking, anywhere you are, you you see that uh, every day. Then um, um, sweet mother is Oh yeah, really, that is yeah. actually your personal favorite one. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite poem. Read it to us quickly. <laughs> okay. Um, like a lump in a womb was my seed in a tube, washing the skin into a mottled pigment of scentless cube, invoking the midst of being a strange feud, like the step of a titular in a pub. A feet clogged with the weight of beach sand, swinging a waist in an unfair balance. A mouth weighing like mucky streams in oars, cut out in cones, insipid like the taste of metal bones. My feet, an awaited grace, shutting her face in the theatre of busy feet, all just stood in awry gaze, as in my word I took my place. This pain can never be described. Sweet mother. Thank you know, you. It's, there's, this, there's a difference in when you're reading the poem and when you're, and when you're reciting it. Yes, Why is that? Like, when you're reading it, it doesn't sound like rhymes. 
Like oh, okay. it doesn't it doesn't feel like rhymes. But when you're reciting them, they feel like rhymes. Yeah. Must every poem have a rhythm to it? Uh, yeah. rhyme is like you know part of the fundamentals of poetry. Okay. But it's not necessary that poems should rhyme. At a certain point, you grow beyond the rhythmic nature of poems to a more robust you know view because you want to actually you know sit your thoughts mm. um, in a tangible form in, in the papers. So you don't just want to fetch words just to rhyme. You want to actually want to make you know sense of what you're writing. Of what you're writing, great. She is not yours. I particularly <laughs> like this one. This is this actually tells a story of a girl with mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. men in her life. Yeah, and I, I saw it at like 10 o'clock at night. Her uncle comes online. <laughs> Social media. She peels away from you. Her voice on the phone is tepid and low. She whispers. Her energy for the night is not yours. She sides, she sides swipes your chivalry with a smirk, with a smirk. She's not yours, you can only wish. The sordid night blows her memories of you. The weak of her soul is averse to the effervescent fire of your desire. And like the green grass on the other side, she never was yours. <laughs> wow. Did you write this at night? <laughs> I can only wonder. I particularly love this. Thank now, so let's much. quickly look at Gal. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I saw it earlier on, but it didn't spark anything. And then you talked about it. Tell me about it. Okay, so Gal is like uh, the story of a girl that was raped by a guy. And mm -hmm. in all our prayers, it just wish that the guy would actually be found in his own pool of blood, the same way he has, you know, dealt or met her with violence. Mm. So that's what Gal is actually about. That this guy is a girl for pushing past my objections. I said no, but he wouldn't stop. He just made sure he had his way. It was terrible for her. So she just wished that one day she will actually discover the same guy dead in the bathtub. Wow. Now let's talk about um, the messages or the message that you, you know, you pass across to people through your poems. I mean, um, the, some of these um, poems here, you know, actually bring to mind some personal issues that people are going through. Yeah. Which particular one resonates with you? Well, all the poems actually resonate with me. Um, like Collie Smoke, um, it actually resonates with me a whole lot because Africa has a lot of potentials but we're not actually optimizing them. Mm. So we need to understand that even with the, uh, you know, the, the virus, the way it has actually sprung up, mm. uh, we, we could have dealt, it, dealt with it in our own times. Mm. You know, we have herbs, which we're not actually, you know, exploring. Utilizing. We're not yeah. doing anything about them. Uh, you know, we keep waiting for the West to think for us. We can't keep waiting for the West to think for us. They don't have our interest. We are our own solution. It's like physicians, you thyself. Okay. You know, we, we claim we're, we're a giant of Africa, we claim we're everything we could ever think of. Then let's step into that shoe, you know. Let's actually, you know, strap our boots and kick I the see that you're running. very passionate about, you know, Nigeria. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it reflects in your poems. Thank you so much for this beautiful message Thank that you've you so put much. together. Thank and this is quite me. a beautiful anthology, I must say. Thank you Thank so you much. Me. And all the best. Thank you All so the much. best, Oilo, you Michael. And that's it on Book Chat Review. I would uh, suggest that you get this book. Lagos is Killing Me is a must read. And uh, we'll have to go on a quick break now. It's top of the hour, people. We have 45 minutes to go. You don't want to miss any second of the show. Stay with us. <laughs>